بدء العملية العسكرية الإسرائيلية إلى شبكة مراسلين حيث يضم A spark igniting a bonfire that was to consume the entire Arab world It began in Tunisia 17th of December 2010 a small town southwest of Tunis Mohamed Bouazizi a young vegetable merchant is on his way to the market. A policewoman helps herself to his wares without paying. Bouazizi protests and gets slapped. His vegetable cart is confiscated. That night, the humiliated young Tunisian douses himself with gasoline and sets himself afire. Protests break out. Tear gas is fired, people are injured. Yet, the more violent the police, the angrier the demonstrators. With a stone in one hand and a cell phone in the other, they march through the streets. The government closes the city to journalists. But Tunisia has three and a half million internet users, nearly a third of the population. And news of the protests spreads quickly. The young vegetable merchant Bouazizi doesn't live to see what he started. In a Tunisian hospital, he succumbs to his burns. Within days of his death, the growing protest leads to the downfall of the country's undemocratic government. On January 14, 2011, President Ben Ali resigns. The first regime in the Arab uprising has fallen. January 2011, the Arab uprising is spreading from Tunisia to Egypt, and the situation is growing more dangerous for the Mubarak regime and for the journalists from Al Jazeera. Egypt has a powerful secret police, and they have a nasty reputation for torture. Protests are concentrated in Tahir Square in Cairo. They begin peacefully, but soon they build into a dangerous confrontation with the state. The crowds grow. Their protests are louder, their demands bolder. While President Mubarak tries to maintain diplomatic dignity, militias react viciously on the streets. Mounted police on horses and camels storm through the crowds with machetes. Shots are fired, people die, but the demonstrators do not withdraw.